Often as animators, particularly when we like to do things straight ahead, where we don't really think too much about the background and we're just going to be artists and be very expressive, this is how you tie it together. This is how you kind of say, okay, well, um, I've got something here, but I want to do something more with it. How can I beef it up? Particularly Sakuga animation, which is called Sakuga. Um, I, you know, the fancy Japanese animation, which is always animated on the spot. Uh, not always, but the flashy stuff which involves moving cameras. So you'll see we've got this animation of this character, uh, this uh, pin-up bear called Gracie Good Bear that I've created, flying around through the air and um, getting bigger and smaller. And it was key animation, but straight ahead but all done on the spot with no thought about background whatsoever. I just thought there's going to be a, a, fl uh, a flying sky, there's going to be stars and clouds and all that kind of stuff. So the first scene, we see the original line test um, of the animation. Now, I left it on twos. It would have been even better with moving camera on ones. So we see the original line test, and I'm like, it's looking great. But you know what? I think it needs a little something to help it uh, get even better, right? If it just had clouds in the sky and bu even buildings or whatever, it would be good. But I felt, you know what? Um, why don't we have her flying through clouds? Why don't we have shooting stars and all that kind of stuff? So I kind of did a straight ahead pass and I roughed out these moving clouds um, where she'll kind of go between clouds. There'll be shooting stars going around her. She'll even uh, break up one of the clouds uh, as she lands on it, and then she'll land on a cloud. There you go. Now I need to think about my background because I've kind of got an idea, but I need to think about the background. So I went through and figured out my camera frames, right? So camera frame one, and these, the ones where... I had my, originally, you'll see it on the next file, this, so this was a main pose here, right? This was a main pose here. So we had those original poses that I drew up, which were would have been, I'm guessing here, this one here, this one here, um, this one here, this one here, um, this one here, this one here, and this one here. So these were the drawings I did first. So here we have our finished layout image, but I'm going to delete some of these things and I'm going to start talking about what I originally did. So the original layouts, the color keys that I showed you, I took those backgrounds and I dragged them in. I just dragged those images in without the clouds, layers and all that because I wanted to figure out how I'm going to paint this background. Then I just basically went in and created background art that kind of covered what, what we were going to be doing in the, in the movements. So if we look at that, there we have our background art with just sky and stuff. Let's just um, pull along it like that. So we got sky and all going to where it needs to go, right? So once I did that, I was ready to test it. And we're going to look at the test in a minute. And then we're going to talk about the clouds and everything. So you can see how this is getting kind of complicated. Here we are, Gracie Fly 4. We're looking at it with the cloud animation guides in there. But we're looking at her with the background now, right? So we can see her with the background. And I'm like, you know what? That background's working nice and smooth. It's looking clean. There's no weird things going on uh, where we feel like, uh, the camera's moving in a strange way. It's all seamlessly going with her. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so you can see how the sound brings it to life even more. You got what they call diegetic and non-diegetic. Diegetic is when the uh, or the character can hear the audio and non-diegetic is the stuff like music which the character can't hear so if you listen there's a slow wind sound in the background just to balance everything off and then we've got the sound of her zooms as, and, and her cloth cloak swishing we've got obviously the shooting stars and the voice let's this brings us to the final edit with the complete composite <laughs> <laughs> Hand drawn forever. Okay, so that's basically the stages how we got there in the end from something that started off as an uh, uh, initial just piece of animation of a character on the spot that I thought I, I would do um, as a just for social media or something like that and then I ended up taking the project a lot further because I felt the animation was good enough to to take further it was rushed but done in a way where I thought you know what it's looking good and it, it won't take that long just maybe about a month to color it and add a background to it and all that kind of stuff hopefully that gives you an idea of um, of how to tackle your backgrounds and your layouts. Obviously the planning, ideally, if you watch the storyboard series, the planning should be done there. But often as animators, particularly when we like to do things straight ahead, uh, in a more straight ahead way, where we just feel we wanna do some movement and some moving camera, where we don't really think too much about the background and we're just gonna be artists and let our, be very expressive. This is how you tie it together. This is how you kind of say, okay, well, um, I've got something here, but I want to do something more with it. How can I beef it up? Hopefully this has helped you uh, understand how to bring your work together from uh, less conventional stages. So starting with production and then working back to pre-production. It's something, uh, you know, thankfully, because I've dabbled in all of these various fields, I've worked in so many various positions, I've worked as... Uh, head of story I've worked as a layout artist I've worked as a character designer I've worked as a you know assistant director uh, animation director all these various roles as well as the basic animator and storyboard artist I'm able to wear different hats and as I'm building this professional archive I want to kind of share with you those things so you can kind of do that yourself you kind of say oh this is how it's done so you don't get intimidated and think well i've done this great piece of animation and now i'm just going to ruin it with a with a rushed background or something that's bad that doesn't quite work listen this is the way you do it right this is the way you can bring some sense to it and make it awesome